Okay, very quick video. It turns out that I skipped a problem and it was one of the more difficult problems and several people have been contacting me and someone even just said, yo, Mr. Rose, can you make a video? Well, I would not like to deny people who watch every freaking minute of all of the videos I made this year and last year, so let's just do it. This is number 33 from the page 6 um, of the, the fun times with anti-differentiation packet and you were supposed to, to finish this problem for homework and to do uh, today and uh, I think in the video I just, I just misnumbered a problem and I, I just simply skipped this, this problem uh, by accident. Okay, uh, how are we going to do this? Well, um, I see something. I see a quadratic inside of a square root and I see an x over here and just immediately I go to um, a fact and uh, the fact is um, a, 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 that the derivative of arc secant um, is um, 1 over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. Okay, I just kind of know that, um, but uh, this can be reproven in somewhere between 3 and 10 minutes. I'm not going to do that right now because I made a video that goes over this uh, very thoroughly and the, the video explains um, why um, there's this absolute value in here. Uh, I'll just say, and this is also maybe you know not, not in the top 100 most important things in the world, but uh, since this is true, the, um, the, the antiderivative of 1 oh well, since this is true, we may also um, ask a follow-up question which is what's the derivative of the arc uh, secant of the absolute value of x? This might strike you as a stupid question to ask, but uh, what it will turn out to be is by splitting this up into cases and applying the chain rule, um, what you're going to get is 1 over x root x squared minus 1. And since that's true, it's that we say that the antiderivative of 1 over uh, x root x squared minus 1, therefore, is arc secant of the absolute value of x plus c. So if you follow all that logic, I'm going to put a little line down here because this is sort of background information. This we did uh, a while ago. This is just a basic fact about differentiating arc secant. What follows is a kind of tedious uh, argument uh, involving uh, cases which says yeah, okay, you know, the arc secant function is, is always increasing, uh, so it's always positive, but um, I'm going to just not say any more about that. All right, so here we go. Um, here we go. Let's do it. Uh, what do we need to do? We need to complete the square inside this square root so we understand what kind of function we really have here. So let's, let's do that right now. So this is dx over, this is x minus 1, and inside here, okay, of course this problem has been written so that it's, you know, just, just going to work out. Um, but let me, let me complete the square. So factoring out of 4, people find this to be very hard for some reason. No, it's just algebra. Uh, minus 2x, leave a space, and then um, to finish, finish completing the square. Oh, and then there's just this plus 3 here. Okay, so this is just like the good way to complete the square. Uh, one number has to go here, well it has to be a 1. What have I just done by writing a 1 there? I've just added 4. So if I just added 4, then I need to subtract 4. Uh, okay, and great. Um, this then becomes the antiderivative of dx over x minus 1 and inside the radical here we have root 4 x minus 1 squared uh, minus 1. Okay, and basically uh, immediately now I am going to uh, do a substitution. Some people don't do this, but I think those people are crazy. Um, my life just becomes a lot easier when my variables are simple, so I'll, I'll take a minute just to make my life easier. Let u be x minus 1, then, uh, then, then du dx is just 1, which is another way of saying that du is just dx. And so, I can rewrite this problem in terms of u. Um, dx is just du, and this becomes a u, 
and this becomes 4u squared uh, minus 1. Okay, and now uh, I'm seeing that things are almost what I want them to be, but not quite. Um, if that 4 weren't there, then I would, tell, I would say that this is in fact exactly equal to the arc secant. But there is a 4 here, so that's slightly annoying, but only slightly annoying because um, I can now write this as u, um, the square root of 2u quantity squared minus 1. So, um, so that's actually not, not so bad. And so, um, I'm going to do another variable substitution because I personally don't uh, anti-differentiate until I get it down to, to sort of the bitter end. So I'll pick another variable, you know, I don't know, w. Let w be 2u and then uh, dw um, du is, um, uh, is, is just 2. Uh, in other words, uh, dw is just 2 du. Okay, so you, you could have done this problem slightly more efficiently by, by seeing uh, ahead a couple steps, but that doesn't seem worth it to me. Okay, well, in preparation for converting this into uh, all w's, uh, I need, uh, well, I need, there to be a, I need there to be a 2 du up there. So I, I put a 2 in the top, and I also need to put a 2 in the bottom because... Uh, I, I want to convert that to, to a W. So those perf perfectly balance each other out. And that means that finally I can write this as DW over W root W squared minus 1. And now um, I simply reach for the fact that this is the antiderivative of arc secant. So the answer to this problem uh, is... Um, arc secant w. Technically, it's arc secant absolute value of w. And what is w? It's 2u. And what is u? It's x minus 1. So this becomes arc secant absolute value of 2x minus 1 plus c. And uh, to me, that's just kind of the answer. Um, what I found slightly interesting is that if you um, type this into a, a computer, that's actually not the answer that you get. You get something a little bit different, and um, maybe I'll just address that uh, very quickly. You can sort of draw a triangle here. What is uh, arc secant of 2x minus 1? Well, it's a... Um, uh, is the angle whose secant is um, 2x minus 1. And what is a secant? It's the, the ratio between the hypotenuse and the adjacent. So if this is like 2x minus 1, then this is 1. That's one way of, of labeling this, this triangle. Um, so here is a representation of a triangle uh, in which this angle theta is arc secant uh, 2x minus 1. So, okay. Uh, in other words, the answer to this problem is, is, is like is sort of that angle. But it's also possible to express this a different way, uh, because well, what is this? Well, if you square, if you just now apply the Pythagorean theorem here, and you square this, uh, what do you get? Of course, you get 4x minus 1 squared, uh, but then minus 1. In other words, this becomes this um, root uh, 4x squared minus 8x plus 3 uh, thing. Um, just, of course, just confirm that that's true, right? I mean, you square this and you square this and you add them together, you just do get uh, 4x squared minus 8x um, plus 4. Uh, okay, so uh, what that means is that there's an alternative answer to this problem, which, for whatever reason, the computers prefer that, uh, that this is actually just arctan of the square root of 4x squared minus 8x plus 3. So don't be alarmed if uh, you're checking this problem with technology that you get a supposedly, you know, different answer. Um, well, it's not really a different answer because um, a given angle can be expressed in terms of arc secant or can be expressed in terms of, uh, of arc tan because uh, they're both describing um, that angle uh, sort of in different ways using, using different sides of the triangle. Okay, that was number 33. Goodbye.